Much of a banjo player, but this is a video about capo anomalies. We did a last year, was it? We did a video on capoing. Yeah, I think it was capos. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Right. I got a bunch of capos here on my table. Uh, we're gonna. I mentioned. Oh, we should do a video on capo anomalies. So this is that video, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and and some of them are an anomaly. Some of them are just like different instruments that need their own capos, and uh, they're kind of fun. Now banjo, the, the, the challenge for a banjo is that you have um, uh, a string mounted on your, on your neck and so there are some uh, banjo players that will get what's called a fifth string a capo and it's like screwed into here and then it, you can slide it up and down and it just capos the one string and if you don't use it you just slide it back behind this, uh, the fifth fret here. Um, what I had done was I had what's called banjo spikes put in and I didn't do it every, you don't really need to do it every fret, I did it on the 7th fret, the 9th uh, fret, and the 10th fret. And right now, so what it is, is it's a little spike, like a little hook, and you just kind of push the string down and push under the spike. And it holds the string down at f below fret height, so that it frets it. So you can see, that's an A, and I've got the little, cute little banjo capo, these are a little adorable little capo here, a little shub. Regular size capo, hold on, regular size capo yeah. for comparison. Uh, baby capo. Baby capo. Yeah, we could totally do a, a, a story time, uh, you know, Goldilocks and the Three Bears with capos. Yeah. No, this one's not that gold. Or too hot. Yeah, what is Goldilocks. It, no. Is it Goldilocks? Yeah, the porch is too hot, porch is yeah, too yeah, cold. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. This uh, is just Now, let's right. say if I want to do A flat, I wouldn't tune the G string up to A flat. What I do is I go ahead and push the um, string under the spike capo. I got my cape, I got my uh, snark tuner in here, and I'm going to tune down to A flat. And now, and now that G string uh, is A flat, and I'm going to move the capo down a fret. And hold on, let me get my finger. We'll do a little A flat. Alex playing the 12 string. All right, let's go fast. Uh, whoops. Ah, it'll do. <laughs> we'll see. One, two, one, two. Uh, but yeah, how often do you hear banjo music in A-flat? But that's where capos come in handy. Uh, capos can get you into those uh, keys that are not necessarily very good um, for the instrument. Now all I do to, to get this out is I push it and let it release this. Well, especially, I mean, with a banjo, that's incredibly important, right? Because a banjo is so open string driven. Like, yeah. that's the sound of a banjo. You need open strings. Yeah, so and every, everybody's tired of hearing banjo and G. G so yeah. in this way, you can at least move it around. Uh, so yeah, so there's a couple options for, for banjo, particularly for the for the G string, the, uh, the high string. So, um, let's see. Uh, the mandolin, again, it's just one of those things where, here's a here's a uh, Kaiser mandolin capo. Just so ding dang cute. What key do you want to go in? Um, a, we want to do A. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to keep with the second fret, and I'm in A. I'm going to play you. So it just makes it that much easier. I just like, I just think, I call it an anomaly just because you don't see little baby capos very often. So if you can see that. For, for mm. anyone counting, that's 20 strings currently. <laughs> right? 20 yeah, strings right. between the two that's of us. True. Yeah, the 20 strings. Uh, okay, now the, the capo on the 12 string, I did a video on this just, uh, just a few weeks ago. And this is a, I got this at the NAMM show. They, uh, G7th gave this to me. And the problem with 12 string capo with 12 capo and a 12 string is that the uh, you've got alternating octaves on the bottom and the the we'll see yeah there could be a heavy it's a big thick string and a little skinny string and a thin skinny string you know thick skinny thick skinny thick and the 
the thick string holds the capo, keeps the capo from pushing down on the uh, on the skinny string. And what what uh, G seven did is they kind of beveled the yeah, bottom the four strings. For you. Yeah. It's like yeah, it almost looks like a sawtooth or something here. Oh, uh, that action <laughs> can't really see that, but yeah, I think it's, it's yeah, cool. It's clo yeah, but and I did, a and I think I can I'll, I can post a picture post, here yeah, too. Post a picture or something. Um, but yeah, what it does is, I mean, it's amazing. It, it works. Uh, none of the strings buzz. Yeah. And now let's just pluck the individual open strings. Yeah. Everything's ringing out. It's, it's freaking, freaking brilliant. Okay. It's a really great design. Uh, hand me the Martin. Yes. So a lot of people ask me about this capo, and I, I got one of these a long time ago. I remember I got this, I think when I was teaching clinics back in the 90s, and it was because somebody go, oh, you got to check out the cut capo. This is called a cut capo. And basically what they did was, um, there's also a uh, drop D capo, which is a capo, Kaiser in particular, you can see if it's got this like cut out of it right here. And what, what it allowed you to do is to capo the top five strings. I don't have one of those. This only capos three strings. So it's supposedly a way of kind of getting a pseudo dad dad tuning. What is it? That's E sus in this case. Is that D sus? Uh, the problem is when I think dad get, I'm not, I automatically don't think that my strings are normal. So it's really hard to play with this because I'm not practicing. I guess, you know, it's not natural for me to play with this and I've never really used one of these, but I know people like them. And so again, this is like a, it looks like a, almost like a mini, like a, a mandolin capo. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is you can flip it around if you want and you can do a kind of an open A tuning, get kind of a Keith Richards. <laughs> Tune that way. Yeah. So I'm thinking when I think um, when I'm thinking keep playing Keith Richards, I'm thinking of having a G tuning. Right. So you, you can't just bar when no. you're in an open tuning. You can't. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. would... we're not technically in an open tuning. Yeah. All it is is like you've got just a couple notes pressed down. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of also where here I'll give you this again. Okay. Put that away. So if I want to do that, if I want to push down a couple notes, I will use maybe a spider capo. And I really love the spider capo for writing and stuff. Sometimes you just want one note, like you want a G in the bottom or something like that. You can throw the spider capo on. The problem is it's in the way now. But I can still, uh, see. So right now, right now I'm just using the spider capo at the third fret and I'm just pushing down one string. And so at the third fret now, this capo allows me to push down any note. So if I want to have a G on top, I could do that too. Yeah. Uh, but I can't get to the G. <laughs> I can't get to that G very easily. So I'm going to go back to the G here, <clears throat> the low G. And now I've got another spider capo here up at the tenth or the twelfth fret, and so now I'm going to go on the say the second string. I'm going to push down the second string at the tenth twelfth fret, and the third string at the twelfth fret, and I've got. tool for writing. One of the things I like um, to do when I'm trying to write new music is to try to confuse myself so that I don't come up with something you know that that I would just naturally play. I want to try to kind of come up with what I like to call beautiful mistakes. And so when you just mess up the guitar some way, whether it be with an open tuning or just using capos in an unusual unorthodox fashion, it'll force you to kind of come up with different uh, uh, things that you never ever in a million years would have would have You can see it in soundtracks. And then if I want, I can.
and just take one of those notes out. people you could show this off a little bit but the fact that it just it tension so you can fit it on any guitar with any string yeah. spacing yeah it's got it's just it just basically screws in you loosen it you can move it uh, to another fret you got to loosen it a little bit and then I can go right up to this or I can put it like yeah like he said on any guitar so if you have a wider like the folk singer the wider string spacing you can it works. still yeah, yeah it still works yeah you can yep. move those little or if like you want to go to a strat you can totally use it on a strat so it's a very fascinating I've got a bunch of these um, mm -hmm. And I've even written some songs uh, using using these. So anyway, so that's that one. Okay, now the weirdest one, I have to say, is so. Let's say you've got a Dobro. Okay, so I got a square. Uh, wait, uh, this is a 1929 National Duolian square neck Dobro, right? Uh, so it's it's built to be played with a slide. I'm a little out of frame, but that's okay. So I got, you know. Okay, so what do I, what if I want to play, you know, what if I want to have these? If I want to be able to do those kind of open licks um, in B flat instead of G, well, this thing, what did you call it? Medieval torture Medieval device? Medieval torture device. It's like, what the? There was a show, I can't remember what it was called, but there was a show where they would literally have four celebrities on a panel, and they would take a device like this, and they wouldn't know what it was, and they would, only one of them would know what it was. And they would say what it is, and then the contestants would have to guess who was Whoa. telling the truth. I forget, it was really pretty funny. I'll have to, you can probably pull it up on YouTube and I'll get a million comments. Oh, it was that show. Uh, so this is probably one of those things where they, somebody- and that's how you found out what a Dobro capo was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he what, was on the show. What in the world is that? <laughs> yeah, right. right. So you just slide it out. It's, and this is also a shop. See, this is like the same maker that made a uh, little banjo capo. Okay, same company. And uh, I don't know of anybody else that made one of these, but it's freaking brilliant. It's just, a, it's a lot. And they're not necessarily very cheap, but you just kind of clamp it, there we, go. there we go. Now technically I'm in B flat. Where are you? Okay, you're good. So that way I can kind of, once I, you know, it takes a minute to kind of get readjusted in the new key, especially when you're trying to, and these strings are ridiculously old, but when you're trying to, uh, your, your, your arm, the movement, you got to get used to the, the shorter, the shorter scale when you've got a capo on a, mm. a dobro particularly. But. Anyway, so I promised a video on capo anomalies. I bet you there are some more out there. If you have any suggestions, make them in the comments and maybe we can do a part two. If we get like five more cap <laughs> anomaly capos, we could do another, a part two. I, I might have to buy instruments to go with them though. I know, right? It's gonna get really... Like, like oh, you, oh, dude, have you seen the sitar capo? And it's we're like the most up, amazing. Yeah, one. we're gonna do like... It's like, dang, that's so cool. Wow, is that a piano capo? Yeah, right. <laughs> Actually, you could do a video on the harpsichord because the harpsichord, if you pull the pin out on the side, you can actually shift the whole keyboard down. That's kind of like a capo. Yeah, it's kind of like a Play capo. It down yeah. It's like the midi, midi shift, pin, yeah. key shift. To, Transpose. Every, every song's in C. You don't play yeah. white keys, you know. So, Anyway, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't hesitate to uh, subscribe. Uh, follow Alex's channel, and I'll put a link in for that as well in a card. Um, and then we will do, I, you'll see Alex on some other stuff soon, okay? God bless you. Bye bye. Thanks. Uh, G. G. Here we go. <laughs>
<laughs> well, that's, you know that's staying on.